sex strike. Okay, so women are expected to have 100% of the responsibility for an unwanted pregnancy. They want us to take hormonal birth control, which can cause blood clot, stroke, death, from the age of like 16, let's say. Uh, or we can use condom, except that's the man's responsibility, and either they don't know how to use them, which is probably like 80% of the time, or they do use them and they take them off without telling you, which is called stealthing, and that's also not against the law in most places. So basically we're fucked, and, if, and for what? 6% of women say they get anything from sex, if you know what I mean. So literally, we're taking 100% of the risk for this activity that brings us mostly nothing. So I say sex strike. I really think sex strike. Women in the world have conducted sex strikes in history. In 2003, oh. a sex strike, a strike helped, helped to end Liberia's brutal civil war. Yes, and the woman who, charged, who started it was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Yes. In 2009, Kenyan women enforced a sex ban until political infighting ceased. Within one week, okay. there was a stable government. Okay, oh. so we have more power than we think we have. And some of it could be right in the bedroom. Just saying. So... The plan, ladies, is to go on a sex strike now, right? Right? We aren't fucking you. Masturbation is revolution. It's resistance. I don't know if y'all seen it or not, but these bitches talking about going on a sex strike and shit. I mean, I get it, but like... Speak for your motherfucking self, ho. Because I'm going to get daddy. I'm going to get daddy. Period. Speak for yourself, bitch. I ain't going on no motherfucking sex strike. Hey, TikTok. You know how everyone's talking about the great divorce that's coming? You know, it's not just because uh, women married men that don't see them as anything more than functional uh, and someone to meet their needs, although that's a big part of it. And it's not just because women contribute more to a marital relationship. They do more around the house. They do more with raising the kids. They plan all of the events for the family, you know, do all the mental and emotional load. You know, that's part of it, too. And another big part is that for most women, they lose themselves. They, they really lose who they are, who they wanted to be, or God forbid if anything changes about what they wanted over the course of a decade-long marriage, you know. Here's why you should stop hooking up with guys. Listen, for so long I said it too. I said, oh, I just want the fun though. No, you don't. You want it all. You want the fun and you want to be treated like a queen. So stop settling for only half the equation. So number one, us women, we hold all the power, all of it. Our cookies are the biggest force in the planet. <laughs> and men will do anything. They will go crazy to get what they need. You realize we have what they need. They have what we want. We would like some love and a relationship, a ring. It's so important to realize that you can be treated exactly how you want if you hold your cookie tight. Don't give it up before you've gotten the treatment you are worthy of. Number two, let's say you're like, well, I don't want a relationship right now. That's fine. But what happens is, is when you just go for the fun and no relationship is you end up building a real connection with someone you don't want a relationship with. So if you don't want a relationship, don't play with your feelings. Don't put your heart out there for someone who you think is gonna be just fun and then you end up catching feelings for someone you have no interest in to take serious. Number three, you really can have it all. You can have the fun and the treatment. You can have it all. If you think you don't want it all, it's because you've probably never had it. Listen, I'm 25, I've never had a boyfriend. I've never had the full package, but I have faith it is out there and I will cross my legs. <laughs> and be patient and you should too. If us women can come together and end hookup culture, imagine how powerful we'd be. Imagine what this world would become. I'll continue using my platform until all women come together. We cancel skinny jeans, we can cancel hookup culture. Let's freaking go. I love you guys, bye. So a lot of men out here wanna say, when you're in your middle age, you're washed up. If you are not still married, you are going to die alone, a cat lady. But I would say that the ground research proves otherwise. If you're a middle-aged single woman and you're going out at night with friends, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We are out last night in the place to be in Palm Springs, Palm Desert area. 
there were a bunch of people there from Southern California because it's kind of like Palm Springs is our Memorial Day getaway place. There were a bunch of different age demographics from 19 to 85. Now I know that Palm Springs has a reputation for attracting an older demographic and that is pretty accurate. But I would say last night had a great, well-balanced population count of all different ages. What is this? I'm in Palm Springs. I don't understand. The Palm Springs Babies by David Shearney. Okay, it's an art piece. Anyway, we are out last night and there are so many middle-aged women, beautiful women in their prime, glowed up, looking snatched, like their outfits, every, all the women in that place were so beautiful. And there were a lot of attractive men, like of all different ages. But there was a huge demographic of middle-aged women my age, out with their girlfriends, having the best time drinking, dancing, singing, partying. It was so great. And I see this all the time. Every time I go out with my girlfriends, it is all women my age who are newly single, who have left their long-term unhappy marriages and are living their best lives with their friends. The energy is so authentically happy and free. It's great. Not to mention, they were swarmed by men, all different aged men, the older men, the younger men. Like there were 20 something men hitting on me, hitting on all the middle-aged women. Like they were going after women my age. And I have noticed that in the dating pool as well. Younger men love women my age. Older men love women my age. Men my age love women my age. Like I honestly feel like this is the best age to be when you're dating. So for any woman that is wondering if she leaves a bad marriage or a bad relationship at her age that she's gonna be left alone and have no attention for men, it is just not accurate. The market research, the ground research does not reflect the narrative that is being sold to women. Next time you're out at night, look around and you will see a slew of middle-aged women. The effects of the great divorce and we couldn't be happier. Hey, it's a break to her, but just because these good looking post walls are getting attention, that doesn't mean they're high value or more sought after than the hot 20 year olds. Women conflate the sexual market value with relationship market value. They think just because a man wants to sleep with them, that it also means he wants to commit to them. And these post walls are only getting attention from younger guys because the more attractive and young women in the West are the most insufferable, spoiled, and entitled females in the world. All they're doing is getting practice reps in with the post walls because they've gone through menopause already or their eggs are powdered milk by now, so the chances of getting them pregnant is very low. So as you can see in that video and the rest of them, apparently feminists are trying to create their own MGTOW movement called Big Tau. Bees go in their own way, I guess to save face. Because there's no men to walk away from. The men have already left since 2016 at least. It's like saying I quit after the boss fires you. It doesn't work that way, and it's unoriginal. What a surprise feminists copy men and claim it's their own. And there's other variations of Big Tau movement like the SEX strike. As if we want SEX from post walls and 304s. And the great divorce. As if 80% of them didn't divorce men already. The whole point of MGTOW is to stop men from getting married to dummies. We in the MGTOW and Passport Bro community didn't even notice until I came across a couple of articles and videos on TikTok. These so-called strikes were so effective. And I imagine 99% of MGTOW too didn't notice there was a strike or movement. I guess it worked because none of us had SEX with anyone from the movement. Before we go any further with the video, let me get to the comment of the day. Shout out to Mark M who said, I was a teacher for over 20 years. I never had a behavior problem with a child from a single father home. Most of my problems were boys from single mother homes. There you guys have it. If you didn't want to believe the internet research, here is a first-hand experience shared by none other than a teacher himself. Thank you for sharing, man. Don't forget to reach out to my email to claim your five bucks. As always guys, I'll pick one comment from each video. It may be the funniest, the most liked, or if you shared a story that is personal and relevant, you might be our very next winner. So be sure to hit that like and sub button as the support helps out the channel a ton. So now let's get right back into the video.
Embrace your masculinity. Let's get down to business. Title of today's article is Men Going Their Own Way, The Rise of a Toxic Male Separatist Movement by Laura Bates. She's a feminist writer for The Guardian who's written articles that you can only read if you pay five bucks. I'll read some of the headlines to give you a taste of how paranoid and delusional she is. There is no war on men. We now know feminism is good for boys. I guess these people have to think of themselves as good or on the right side of history. Otherwise, they'd be pure sociopathic. Maybe it's both. Childcare costs are forcing women in Britain out of work. It needn't be this way. It's called marry a man who has a good job and be a stay-at-home mom. Of course, feminism is only for the upper-middle-class, champagne-rich liberal women, because anyone making less than 40k is going to have a hard time being a boss lady and raising the kids. And as you see in the article title, they literally outsource their parenting to a minimum-wage employee at childcare. Wow. Great parenting, feminists. Next title. The incel movement is a form of extremism and it cannot be ignored any longer. Who's going to tell her that feminists raise incels? That's why they go postal or become trans. Anyways, let's get to today's article. The men of the MGTOW movement aim to live their lives with no female contact. The idea began on the fringes of the internet, so how has it made it all the way to the White House? This was written in 2020 when Trump was still in office, and MGTOW doesn't mean end female contact totally, just not commit to them at the very least and not center one's life around getting a used up female in the West. Walking away creates a position of power. Otherwise, feminists wouldn't be making articles about MGTOW or crying about it on social media like TikTok. There has been an awakening, changing the world, one man at a time. These are the dramatic words that appear when you visit MGTOW.com. In a video that looks a lot like an action movie trailer, the words are soon followed by five more that appear to smash through the screen. Smoldering fiery red. Men going their own way. In case you haven't seen the MGTOW trailer, here it is. If you stumbled across this website and had never heard of men going their own way, MGTOW, before, you would probably assume this was a tiny extreme movement, but you would be only half right. To be honest, I've been in MGTOW for a decade and I've never heard of this website as well. MGTOW is mostly on the main social media platforms. Back to the article. The views of MGTOW are indeed unorthodox, even within the sprawling web of groups, lifestyles, and cults known as the Manosphere where women haters mobilize against a supposed gynocratic conspiracy, while incels plot violent revenge on women and pickup artists, or PUAs, deploy predatory tactics to game women into having SEX with them. The men of the MGTOW attempt to eschew relationships with women altogether. They are literally going their own way, far, far away from any women at all. Going monk mode isn't unorthodox or cult-like. It's what most men should be doing, especially during their youth when they discover themselves and it should last into their adulthood until they're financially, emotionally, and physically ready for a relationship. She gets this all wrong. The whole men's movement is the manosphere, and then under that are different philosophies and movements. 
like MGTOW, the Red Pill, Monk, the White Pill, Black Pill, Incels, PUAs, which stand for the Pickup Artists, what else? The Trad Movement, which includes the Trad Wives. If I left out any, please let me know in the comments. If you don't know what any of those mean, search the terms on YouTube. Back to the article. Although some MGTOW maintain platonic relationships with women and others have one-night stands or visit SEX workers, many refer to abstain from SEX, a process referred to as going monk. This is too much for some members of the wider manosphere. The blogger Matt Forney, notorious for posts such as why fat girls don't deserve to be loved and the necessity of domestic violence, wrote that men going their own way is no way for men to go, and mocked MGTOW as a cult for lonely virgins. Never heard of Matt, and I'm assuming he's part of her straw man argument. It sounds like his blogs are jokes and dark humor, because fat girls don't deserve to be loved is pretty funny. But again, don't know him and what he does is what he does. He's not a founding father of MGTOW or the leader of the Manosphere. The Manosphere is just a collection of ideas and factions, and lifestyles and movements. Back to the article. But this isn't an obscure internet cul-de-sac. MGTOW.com alone has almost 33,000 members. Its forums, for men only, contain conversations on more than 50,000 topics, with more than 790,000 replies, which range from advice on divorcing as cheaply as possible to lurid stories about women who have found particularly inventive ways to murder their husbands. The site also lists 25 video channels. Between them, these have more than 730,000 followers, and their videos have been viewed a total of 130 million times. Never heard of it, and why would that be men's fault for women deleting their husbands? They're just sharing the stories so other men can watch out. The gaslighting is on a whole new level. Somehow we're to blame when we're just blowing the whistle on these psychotic feminists. Continuing the article. Over on YouTube, one of the best known MGTOW vloggers, who goes by the name of Sandman, has racked up more than 90 million views for videos with titles ranging from smart men don't get married to criticize her and she will destroy your career. Sandman is an OG and is one of the many famous figures in the MGTOW movement. I'm going to save you the headache and skip a lot of this. Women are essentially portrayed as parasites riding on the coattails of men, who have, throughout history, been responsible for far greater miracles of science, discovery, and human endeavor. By shaking women off, it is explained, men will be free to pursue even higher achievements. That sounds about right. Men built this world, and feminists, manginas, and simps are destroying it. Good for her for getting that right. Or, I mean, representing the manosphere point of view accurately. Continuing, I love this. I feel like I found the secret to the universe, a user comments in MGTOW.com's testimonial section. Another writes that his city has become so ultra-feminized that things are mind-blowingly bad for men here, especially straight white men. Elsewhere, philosophy and opinion are mixed with a heavy dose of often deeply misogynistic advice, such as this from the FAQ section of a different MGTOW website. My girlfriend is pregnant, what do I do? Whatever you do, do not invite her into the hot tub with champagne to celebrate. This can cause a miscarriage and she would lose the baby. Repeat, you should not under any circumstances do that as quickly as possible. It is impossible to know how seriously a comment like this is meant, but whether the original writer intended simply to shock or entertain, it is also impossible to know how it might be interpreted. One random website called MGTOW.com which apparently has been shut down already or is offline because the page for me wouldn't load. Maybe it's my internet or America already has the great feminist wall of censorship. Please in the comments section let me know if you see anything different, because all I'm getting is a blank white screen. Back to the article. MGTOW, pronounced MIG-TOW by adherents. I'm gonna skip to the next paragraph, this is dumb. Once you have taken the red pill, that is, open your eyes to the reality that, as a man, the whole world is stacked against you, there are four main levels of MGTOW, according to many websites. Level 1 involves rejecting long-term relationships, while level 2 extends this to short-term relationships. Level 3 requires economic disengagement, reducing taxation as far as possible in order to avoid paying towards the support of other groups from elite alphas to single mothers. As one MGTOW manifesto puts it, as well as fighting to instill masculinity in men, MGTOW must work toward limited government. Most of what she said just sounds good. Sign me up. Child support is the new slavery. A man literally goes to prison if he doesn't pay for child support. Yet, a deadbeat single mom is given handouts, like welfare, food stamps, and free housing. Now tell me how that's fair. How is that the so-called equality feminists claim to be fighting for? 
Also, our governments in the West are being ran by manginas and feminists. Have you seen downtown Toronto, London, or any other major city in the West? They're full of trash, homeless, drugs, criminals, crime, and filth. Thanks, feminism. Real progress there. Back to the article. Level 4 is described as social rejection. The MGTOW drops out of society altogether, says the MGTOW blogger The Observer Watches. Let's skip some more of this article. I don't even know what these obscure ideas she's talking about, and I've been in the MGTOW movement's balls deep. In this, MGTOW resemble men's rights activists, or MRAs, more than incels or PUAs. Both groups believe that women pose an immediate threat to all men. MRAs believe that women are so unfaithful and untruthful that they often force men to raise other men's children, thus financially cuckolding them. MGTOW believe that women are extremely likely to make false accusations of various sorts in order to damage men socially, steal their money, or even have them jailed. That's about right. Modern women or feminists or HOEs have no loyalty to anyone. They have no problem making a false accusation against a man and sending him to prison if it meant concealing their 304 ways or simply do it for revenge. Either way, it's one of the main reasons why MGTOW exists. Continuing, Sherat also went on to cite a list of concerns that would resonate particularly close with MRAs, including, men are supposed to pay for dates and bow down to women. Anything less than worship is hate. And, when it comes to marriage, the system is so stacked against men, it does not make sense. MGTOW and MRAs alike see divorce as deeply one-sided, allowing women to rob innocent men of money, property, and in some cases, children. That's a fact. Is this writer living under a rock? Has she not heard of these male celebs and athletes being forced to pay six figures for child support to a thought that baby trapped them, or losing half their net worth because their trophy wife decided to end the two-year marriage? Back to the article. Unable to stop thinking about Sherrod, I tracked him down to ask about his experience of becoming involved in the community. Now, 22, Sherrod is an engineering apprentice and says he has left MGTOW and other Manosphere groups behind. At first, he says they were legitimately fun. I had lots of friends, which was new to me. Lots of fans and positive reinforcement. As we started to grow and build, it honestly felt like we were eventually going to start making some positive change. It wasn't just a community, but a new, growing movement that I got into before it was cool. So, in a way, I felt like I was part of something progressive. Sherap could not, however, claim to be a pioneer. It is generally accepted within the MGTOW community that the movement was started in the mid-2000s by two men going by the pseudonyms Solaris, an Australian, and Ragnar, a Scandinavian, who describes himself as an old guy and a former pilot, both of whom had been previously active in what they described as the online men's movement. A sense of alienation is where this whole thing starts, Solaris claimed in a 2012 YouTube interview. You realize, simply because you're a man, that you are considered a legitimate target for being the butt of jokes or being considered a class enemy. Colleges and universities all over the West are telling men to check their privilege, as well as expelling male students over false accusations without due process. The feminist media complex has made men the butt end of the jokes for years and portrayed them as incompetent and lucky to be married to a feminist wife who knows it all. That's why I stopped watching TV shows, movies, or anything Hollywood related. I'm too busy making MGTOW videos in the first place, but even superhero movies aren't fun anymore. It's full of woke garbage. Back to the article. As with many areas of the Manosphere, it is difficult to know where most users of MGTOW forums and communities are based, though the majority communicate in English, and comments and usernames suggest that the US, Canada, and the UK are common locations. If you look for MGTOW in the West, you'll find it in English because we live in English-speaking countries. All of these movements are in other languages as well and other countries. I'm just not as familiar with those because I don't effin' speak their language. All I do know is these movements are in India, Brazil, most of the Spanish-speaking countries, because I see the MGTOW videos in the other languages on social media. There's communities in every country, but it's going to be much less in the traditional countries. Like some parts of the Middle East just allowed women to drive, so they're good. They're not going to need MGTOW as much, just as long as they keep women out of politics. I'm skipping more, just more gaslighting. It is easy to write off MGTOW as a weird group of goofy celibates. Yet it has, in some ways, quietly penetrated mainstream culture more successfully than any other segment of the Manosphere. In the immediate wake of the hashtag MeToo movement, which saw millions of women worldwide standing up to harassment and salt by sharing their own stories, there was a swift and severe backlash. Critics claimed that the movement was a pitchfork mob, 
a witch hunt designed to topple men from their jobs and lives, without so much as an attempt at due process. Some commentators settled for hounding women who had dared to share their stories or denigrating the movement as a whole. That's because it was. Sure, a couple of male feminists like Harvey Weinstein got what they deserved, but a lot of it were thoughts wanting a paycheck or clout by making obscure accusations from decades ago. During that time, it was a free-for-all, for all these Hollywood industry post-wall 304s scrambling to get a retirement check when they decided to recategorize selling their soul for money and fame as being violated. They knew the deal was pay-to-play, and they still did it. Not defending the degenerates who took advantage of them, but they didn't want accountability for their hooker actions and play victim. Skipping more, in the same way that the MGTOW movement turns the structural oppression of women on its head, claiming men are the true victims of gender bias, this spate of mainstream examples sought to cast men as the real victims of the hashtag MeToo movement. Men, it argued, had little choice but to protect themselves from the all-powerful cabal of rampaging, vindictive women making false accusations, even if the solution was as extreme as total isolation. It's the gynocentric doctorship that's the muscle for these feminists, because they are the foot soldiers of the New World Order army. Skipping more. This did not go unnoticed by the MGTOW, whose celebrations were evident in gloating Reddit threads. Why feminists fear the Mike Pence rule, and YouTube videos, we invented the Pence rule. Nor does it remain a niche idea. A 2019 study found that 27% of American men now avoid one-on-one -on -one meetings with female colleagues. So the ideas we might think of as the shadowy, ridiculous concerns of the extreme internet fringes are actually being waved under our very noses from the White House front lawn because Mike Pence and his wife made an oath together that they'll never be alone with the opposite sex. This feminist thinks that's bad. And she's not alone. It triggered all of them. You know why? Because feminists want the power over men to falsely accuse them or they truly believe that women can't lie. The movement of men not wanting to be alone with another woman is a good idea. I thought according to feminists like this writer, men are pigs and violators. Wouldn't she, by her own feminist logic, want women to have other people with them if men control themselves? Anyways, that's the end of the article. This is why you should never date or marry a feminist. They're complete headaches. MGTOW. As always, I wish you tremendous success. Now it's your turn. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Remember that if you leave the best comment, you'll get 5 bucks. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, Hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, drop a comment, and share it. See you in the next video. Till next time.